Hello, this is Mike, and welcome to PHP Programming Lesson 39. And today we're going to be talking about connecting to a MySQL database and using a config file. Now, last time we actually created a relational database, and the way we did that is we created two tables, a sequences table and a pages table, and we related the two by the uh, sequences ID. And if you uh, missed that, just go back and watch the previous video. And this time what we're going to actually do is connect to this database and the first thing I want to talk about is config files. Now the whole database process really is a five-step process. You're going to create a connection, you're going to select a database, you're going to perform a data query, and you're going to use return data if you have some, and then you're going to close the connection. Now in the connection process, you actually have uh, two files that we're going to be dealing with, a config file, and the reason for that is convenience and security and the connection code and you're going to be using the acquire once to bring the config file into the connection code so let me first show you config file and show you how I've set up my config file system we're going to go back to a PHP Eclipse bring that up and a great config file is the one you can find in WordPress so let's go ahead and navigate down to WordPress here we are right here and if you open up WordPress you're going to find as you navigate down that it has a config file. Let's click on that and let's zip up here and take a look at what's in that config file. And what you're basically going to see in the config file is the define command. Now, now go back to lesson one and remind yourself what the define uh, method does. It actually defines a static variable. And in this case, what we're going to be doing is actually de defining our database name, the database user, the password, the host. In this case, they also define a character set and a correlate uh, parameter. If you page down a little bit more in the WordPress uh, config file, you see a number of password and keys being defined. And below that, you actually find the prefix defined. And then below that, you uh, find an absolute path defined. Let's bring that up so you can see that. And in an upcoming video, we're going to be talking about uh, paths and files and all the stuff that you're going to need to work with files. So we'll go ahead and just skip over that. What we're going to do in our config file is define all the basic database information. Now, the reason we're going to do that is because if I decide to change databases, I don't have to open up the connection file. I can just change my config file. So that makes it very easy for installation purposes. So each time I decide to install an application on a user's machine, I just grab their database name, username, password, host, whatever is required for that database to get up and running. And I'm, I'm ready to go just by changing a one single config file. So that's one reason for using a config file. The other reason is security. And let me show you how I have my config file set up. So we're going to close this WordPress and let's go to Lesson 39. In Lesson 39, you're actually going to see that I actually have two folders right here. And in those two folders, I actually have a uh, config file. And it's not in the same file as the database connection uh, code. Isn't that very interesting? And that adds just another layer of security. So if for some reason someone's able to get into or I forget to set the uh, requirements on this folder correctly or something happens, uh, they will not be able to get to the config file because that actually is stepped back in another directory. So many times people keep their fig files in other places and, and just point to those within the uh, connection code and we're actually going to use that technique today. So let's go ahead and click on the connection code and start discussing how it works. So the first thing you see is I'm actually going to require that config file. So if I'm going to require that config file, let's take a look and see what we're requiring. Now, what does the require do? Well, it actually just brings the code in as if it was there. And notice right here, I want to make one big point. I have a dot, dot. What that dot, dot is going to do is going to step me back one directory. So I'm going to bring that config file in, not from the present directory where this code is, but I'm going to step back one uh, folder, and that would be this folder right here. And so stepping back from this folder brings me into the, the folder above it. And that's where my config file is. I hope I said that right. <laughs> Let's say that one more time. So what the dot dot is going to do is just step me back one folder and or one directory, and that will enable me to grab the config file from outside uh, the folder of the connection data. So let's open up that config file and see what we have in here. So I've made just one little change here. I am using the define variable to define my database uh, server, which in this case is localhost. Here's my username, which is root. My password is blank. I have the actual database name, which is Storyboard. 
and uh, I have uh, the database port in this particular example. Now, if you're working with Zend, you may need this. So here's the port. And once again, the character set that I won't use and the collate that I won't use. I just grab those from uh, WordPress, you know, as good measure. But I've got something else going on here, and I've got the defined uh, method here. And it's asking me, has that uh, static variable been, been defined yet? And if it has been defined, just send back the null. We don't need to do anything. But if it hasn't been defined, then define it. Now, this is a very interesting convention that you see. Uh, and let me just explain this real quick for you. We have already learned the if statement. So if something is true, right? Got some Boolean in here. Uh, then execute a particular statement, right? Else, do something else. And we've learned that before. But there's a shorthand technique for this. And that shorthand technique is this. Instead of using the if statement, you just use a question mark, then put your first statement, then put a colon, and put your second statement. So this is a shorthand notation for the if statement. So just to let you know if you ever see this statement right here, defined whatever it is, some Boolean. If it's true, then this statement will be executed. And if not, this statement will be executed. It is a shorthand notation for the uh, if statement that you see above here. And so you'll see that lots of times in code, and it may confuse you. But just interpret it as a simple if statement. And it's pretty much just asking the question, if this bool is correct, then do this. And if not, do the thing on the other side of the uh, uh, colon and a lot of people get confused when they see this it's not the typical if uh, format but it actually is just a simple if statement so I just want to show you that right there and the other thing I'm doing is, of course is using this defined method as well and uh, uh, putting in a null so just one more kind of step of security just uh, making sure that that has been defined before I tr try to define it again uh, so you have this particular file, it's your config file, and once again, you're going to step it back to the previous directory for security purposes, and you're also going to use this in case you want to just define another database. So if you have another database, all you do is you know redo your config file. Don't have to worry about actually going into the connection code and changing that. Now let's start taking a look at the connection code. Let me bring that up. So there's your config file, which is going to bring in all your database stuff. Now if you look down here in the constructor, you have all those database names that which have been created in the config file. So let's not get ahead of ourselves because we're going to need to talk about what this constructor means and we're going to need to discuss a whole new series of commands. It, you may have been expecting if you've done databasing before to see the MySQL command connect. But there's something extra here and that's a little i here. MySQLi, what is that? Well, that came along between the evolution between uh, PHP 4 to PHP 5, and I stands for improves. So there are now a series of new commands that we're going to use that you typically won't find anywhere else. If you go to lynda.com or if you go to uh, the web or you look at other applications, you're going to see MySQL, not MySQL I. So this is something new, and uh, hang on because we're going to be going through this as we move through this series. So what I want to do is just make that point one more time. Going back to the discussion here. is that we will be using MySQLi extension, which basically means MySQL improved. And the whole reason for it has been upgraded for object-oriented programming. And there's a lot of features that I've listed here that just you know really improves it, makes it much more easy to work with the database, and it actually enables you to work with your resources a lot more efficiently as well. I have a whole list of uh, MySQLi commands. And if you were to learn all these commands, you would become a MySQLi uh, Jedi Knight, of course. And so there's a list here, and it may be a little daunting at first, but as you begin to work with them, you'll find out that you can understand them fairly easily and use them to accomplish all your database needs. So let's quickly review what we did. We created two files, a connection file and a config file. And we actually put those in different uh, directories for uh, security purposes. In the config file right here, we used the define command to define a static variable, which held our uh, important database information, such as the name, the password, the root, uh, the port, and other things. And we actually used this uh, convention as, and we used a question mark convention as opposed to the if convention to define a simple if statement very easily. Uh, then what we did, we actually uh, looked at our connection code and we used a dot dot convention to basically step back a directory to grab the config information and bring it into our connection uh, code. And next time we're going to actually use the MySQLi commands to connect to our database. So thanks for listening. This is Mike Lively and I'll see you next time.